So, Mr. Secretary, we'll start with a pretty general one. You've been critical of a lot of the economic policies coming out of the Trump administration. Is there one specific policy that you think is most dangerous? Probably their approach to the global economy. Viewing the global economy as all about win-lose rather than about cooperation undermines prospects uh, everywhere. That's there in their attitude towards trade wars. That's there in their attitude towards uh, international institutions. That's there in their rhetoric uh, towards uh, other countries. And what we know is that we've had an experiment when the world moved towards nationalism, moved towards zero-sum thinking in economics. It was the late 1920s and the early 1930s, and it didn't end very well. And so I think on broad national security grounds, and as well as on grounds of U.S. prosperity, the orientation of the administration towards global economic policy is very dangerous. If we were looking to help China, it's hard to imagine a better strategy than the one we have pursued of abandoning our TPP allies, of being so truculent that other countries have rallied to China's side, of hamstringing our producers by raising their input costs uh, with uh, tariffs, and by alienating the rest of the world with our uh, unpredictability. I mean, it is a feat of diplomacy for South Korea and Japan to now regard us as a greater threat to their security than they regard North Korea as being. You really think that's true? I think their greatest fear, if you talk to them, is that we will launch some kind of military confrontation of which they will be uh, the victims. And yet the Trump administration has succeeded at least in bringing Kim Jong-un to the table. So I'm just wondering as it relates to trade and Doesn't economic know what it means. Yes, they have, they have succeeded in giving Kim Jong-un more prestige than any North Korean leader has ever had by putting him in a symmetric relationship at a negotiating table with the President of the United States. That is a gift to him. Whether as a consequence of that gift they will extract meaningful progress remains to be seen, and perhaps they will, um, and certainly we're all rooting uh, for them to succeed. But one should not confuse a country with a negligible GDP having its leader sit with the President of the United States with um, an achievement for the President of the United States. Do you blame Secretary Mnuchin for the economic policies coming out of this administration? Yeah, I think ultimately uh, presidents get the advisors and the cabinet members uh, they uh, deserve. I do think uh, the policies are fairly systematically short-sighted and uh, run long-run dangers. I spoke about what's involved in uh, their approach to uh, international uh, economic uh, policy, their approach of heavy fiscal, heavy, uh, fiscal stimulus um, in the ninth year of an expansion, impoverishes the public sector uh, over time and just sets the stage for larger fiscal problems in the future. And it fires off our ammunition before we have a problem. We will have a next recession and we won't be able to fire the fiscal cannon because the administration's policies have already shot it off. More and more talk about an eventual recession. Do you have any prediction on when that would be? I think the, the odds of a recession are about 20% a year. Uh, that means that it's better than even that we'll have one sometime uh, in the next three years. Exactly when, I don't know. What scares me is the brittleness of the economy. We've already used up a substantial part of the fiscal policy room and with interest rates where they are normally we get out of recessions by cutting interest rates by 500 basis points and we're not going to have anything like 500 basis points of room to cut interest rates. Do you give the Trump administration credit for anything? 
I think they have connected and shown that they care about a large number of Americans in the middle of the country who have felt disconnected from national policymakers who have seemed responsive uh, to coastal elites. I don't like the specific measures that the Trump administration has taken, and I think for the most part they will backfire against those they profess to help. But I think establishing that sense of connection is uh, something that is important uh, for leaders to do. What about Amazon? The president has targeted Amazon in tweets for everything from taxes to hurting retailers. Does Amazon deserve that kind of scrutiny from the president? First of all, presidents should not be singling out particular companies for attack. That's the stuff of Mussolini or Perone, not the stuff of the United States. There should, of course, be a systematic examination of the economic policy issues that are raised by the very rapid growth and substantial scale of a company like Amazon. I think there are very large issues around the taxes paid, or more accurately, frequently, not paid by the major technology companies, and that certainly should be uh, an object of study by those concerned with uh, tax reform. I think wherever there is big data, there are legitimate concerns about privacy and the dissemination of that data and that public policy is lagging way behind in that area. I think antitrust should look at um, competitive practices. I don't think that growing by providing products at low cost is monopoly. And so insofar as Amazon is just being a really effective retailer, that is not a reason for antitrust. But of course, if they're pursuing anti-competitive practices, they're denying suppliers the right to supply to them if they supply to other people, if they're doing things of that kind, of course those kinds of things uh, should uh, be investigated. But it's really dangerous for there to be a world where businesses feel they have to stay on the right side of the President of the United States or he will use the awesome powers of the U.S. government to retaliate. Or social and media. And so that, yeah, social media, but that social media is a signal to the thousands of political appointees in the government as to, as to how they should behave. So I have found from the beginning of uh, this administration that its emphasis on what might be called deals capitalism rather than what might be called rule of law capitalism is very problematic. That's the stuff of struggling emerging markets, not uh, the stuff of uh, the United States. And I think over time, it takes a real toll in terms of the predictability of the business uh, environment, in terms of the willingness of firms to be based in America, to innovate uh, in America. Finally, I wanted to ask you about what we're seeing in the bond market, because things seem to change in the last week or few weeks or so. Two-year yields are at a decade high. We saw a big jump in 10-year yields, though, mostly curve flattening. What do you make of the messages we're getting from bonds right now? I think markets are seeing more evidence of inflation accelerating, and therefore they're expecting more Fed action, and that's showing up disproportionately in the two-year but it's showing up to some extent in the 10-year, and therefore you get a, uh, a flattening of uh, the curve. Insofar as it's driven by econ evidence of economic strength and driven by some evidence of rising inflation towards and above uh, 2%, I don't think it's something that one should see as uh, terribly... Uh, ominous. In fact, I think uh, there's probably something somewhat benign um, about it. What I worry about 
is whether we have an economy that can sustain strong growth with a strong financial foundation. Yes, we can get growth if we run massive budget deficits, we have a massive Fed balance sheet, we keep interest rates very low, but that ultimately undermines financial stability. And so the question is, can we find a formula for growth with sustainable finance? And I'm not so sure that we've quite figured that out. And that's why I view the near term uh, in a relatively calm way, but I'm more troubled by the medium term for our economy. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.